And we're back here on The Fowler Show. We're joined by Adrian Elrod from the Hillary Clinton campaign. Welcome to the show. Thanks so much for having me. So you have a big job. Like, you are the surrogate director extraordinaire. You make sure all the celebrities get to the right place all across the country. Everybody endorsing Hillary. So I, first, before we talk shop, tell me. I would know. The, the, the coolest person you got to work with this campaign cycle. And those are Hillary Clinton. The coolest celebrity? Yeah. I have to say, Lena Dunham is right there at the very top. She's pretty awesome. Angela Bassett, another favorite of mine. We've got a lot of. We have the good. The good issue is that we have a lot of good celebrities. We have a lot to work with, so they're all amazing. But those are two of my favorites. And who is the one celebrity that has not been out on the trail that will be going on the trail that you could tell our viewers and nobody else? <laughs> Well, I'm hoping that Sarah Silverman, who spoke last night, I'm hoping that we can get her activated on the campaign trail. Obviously, she was with Bernie Sanders during the primary, but she's now with us, and we're all united, so she would be an amazing uh, wish list surrogate to get out there on Anyone the campaign else? trail. That's They're it not right letting now. out any secrets. So, you know, I'm trying. I'm fishing as hard as possible. They're letting out no secrets, guys. That's true. That's I mean, true. I have a sense of who I know who I want. I know who I think they're going to bring out, but they won't tell me. So, who, so who's that? I think you guys are going to bring out Beyonce at some point in time on the campaign trail. Maybe. Maybe this week. Maybe. Um, not this week. Not this week. But I will give. I, I will give that secret away. Not this week. But we love Beyonce. So Beyonce will be on the campaign trail before you know it. So let's talk shop now. So. Hillary Clinton leaves this convention on Friday as the Democratic nominee of the President of the United States. You know, Americans go on vacation, right around back to school, this thing picks back up. What's your top priority the last week of August? The last week of August, well, first of all, we are going to be, even if people are on vacation and the Olympics and whatnot, we are still going to have surrogates active everywhere. But the last week of August is a really important point because, as you know, once we hit Labor Day, September, that's when everyone... It's you, game time, baby. It's game time. People who have not been as engaged or involved are going to be really, really you know, starting to pay more attention and figure out who they're going to support. Uh, and as you probably know, some states, early vote starts in late September. Um, so that last week in August is going to be very, very, very critical. Um, but so is the rest of August too. So let's talk about that. So what's the so what's the strategy from the campaign, right? How do you so clearly you have to turn out you gotta turn out uh, millennials, you've gotta turn out Hispanics, you gotta turn out African Americans in places like Norfolk, Virginia, yeah. Broward County, Florida. Yeah. You know, you're turning folks out Cuyahoga County. Yep. Uh, these are all familiar places. Yep. What is how do you what's the plan to do that? Obviously knocking on doors and getting the vote. But what but beyond that, what else is the plan? Well, the plan is to, well, first of all, we have a very, very sophisticated get out the vote operation, field operation. Um, Robbie Mook, our campaign manager, from the very beginning invested very aggressively in an in-house analytics team that is literally able to forecast that, you know, they take polling, they take marketing data, they take, you know, states that voted, sim you know, states that are very similar demographically and apply that to a very complicated algorithm uh, for forecasting how other states will vote. Uh, and they have this predictive modeling that is really, really phenomenal. So that will all be employed strategically into our entire uh, get out the vote operation. But look, this is where surrogates come in. I mean, Hillary Clinton can only be in one, in one place at one time. Um, there are days where we have three to 400 people out there that we need filling in at, you know, in her place at events that she can't be at. So the surrogates operation is very important to you know, convincing millennials, convincing you know, any undecided voter to support Hillary and to also make sure that people don't sit home and vote. I mean, and not vote this election cycle. So, and what do you say to like, I mean, there's obviously, I mean, Adrian, we could all admit that there is a sense, there seems to be a little bit of an enthusiasm gap, a little more, enthusiasm gaps from your pre, years previous. How do you guys fix that? I mean, how do you make that gap up? We all know it's there. You have the Bernie people being the Bernie people. You have the old Obama people who are like, well, we're only voting for Obama. But we're not enthused by Hillary. What is, what's the plan to get those folks out and active? Well, first of all, I just want to say I don't see the enthusiasm gap. As That's a fair. woman, I have seen so many young girls, um, you know, who are just, you know, waiting on the ro rope line with such excitement, wanting to get that selfie, wanting to meet Hillary, who are so inspired by her. So I don't see the enthusiasm gap. However, that being said, um, it is something that, you know, we want to make sure that people understand what's at stake in this election. Uh, that should get people enthusiastic, if, if nothing else. Um, obviously, talking about the fact that we cannot let Donald Trump uh, become our next president. So I think, you know, again, it's one of those things you see a lot of enthusiasm here. I think coming out of the convention, uh, you're going to see a lot of people who are ready to support Hillary more than ever. And uh, we will continue to build on that. Uh, progress and support throughout the uh, remainder of the campaign. Okay, okay, that's fair. 
Uh, and, and so, what happens? So what happens on Friday? So this convention, like everybody's been gearing up for this convention. This convention ends Friday. How? What's the strategy on bringing the Bernie folks back into the camp? Well, I think first of all, it's happening. Uh, it's happening. You know, like last night, you saw it. Uh, probably you noticed during the beginning of the convention, there was a lot of, uh, you know, frustration among some of the Bernie supporters. But by the time Michelle Obama took the stage, I mean, you could not hear a pin drop in the room. There was a lot of, you know, unity and respect. Of course, Bernie Sanders yet again last night preached the notion of, of unity and how we all have to come together. Uh, so, you know, again, we have work to do. We are committed to doing whatever we can to make sure that these people, uh, you know, the Bernie Sanders supporters who are not with us yet, uh, turn out for us in the end. And I think Bernie is going to be a really big part of making that happen. Yeah, uh, so you, is he going out of the campaign trail with you guys? I think so. I mean, you know, he's already done some events and, uh, you know, uh, Jane is obviously very supportive as well. So I think we'll be seeing a lot of Bernie on the campaign trail. Adrian, from the Hilda Clinton campaign, we appreciate you being here. We'll be